Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Chris Dost and I want to welcome you to this series on the textual analysis of the book of Amos. In this series we're going to be looking at the Masoretic text of Amos, but we will also be dealing with text critical issues. We'll be learning how to translate the text in both a literal and a dynamic fashion and we'll be doing lots of Masoretic and uh, grammatical analysis along the way. So I hope you enjoy this series and if you would please subscribe to this channel. Make sure Sure you like the videos when they appear and be sure to ring the bell so that you're notified when the new videos do appear. All right, let's get into the text. All right, Amos 1 1 says, Divrei Amos, Asher Haya van Nokedim Mitako, Asher Chaza al Yisrael, Vime Uzia Melech Yuda, U Vime Yorvam ben Yoash Melech Israel, Shnataim Lifne Haraash. And slowly, Divrei Amos. Asher haya van nokdim mitkoa Asher chaza al Yisrael bime uzia melech Yehuda uvime Yeravam ben Yoash melech Israel shnatayim lifne haraash. The first word of the text, divrei is a masculine plural construct form meaning the words of, the words of. And so together it is divrei amos, divrei amos. The words of Amos. It's been pointed out that this word can also mean the affairs of the words of Amos or the affairs of Amos or perhaps it's a double entendre because prophetic literature in the Hebrew Bible generally includes not only the speeches of a prophet but also some biographical information. There are stories and episodes that are included. This is true in Isaiah 36 to 39 uh, for instance, even Isaiah 7, the Emmanuel passage, is a, what you may call a biographical passage. And Amos 7 also contains some biographical material. Jeremiah is loaded with it, Ezekiel is loaded with it, and so on. So it's perfectly reasonable to translate this as the words and affairs of Amos, but this is uh, traditionally translated as the words of Amos. So for those of you who are not familiar with the cantillation system, the cantillation uh, marks, or you know what some people may refer to as the accent marks, are broken up into two categories, that is disjunctive and conjunctive. So you can see here in the electronic version of BHQ that the, they list the disjunctive accents first, and then as you scroll down, you will see the conjunctive accents. Now, if you look at the first one here in the conjunctive uh, category, this is munach, munach. So when we go back to the first word of Amos 1, divrei, we see that there is a munach accent on the word or a munach cantillation mark on the word. This is a conjunctive accent which means it's tying this word to the word that follows. So you'll notice on the second word, Amos, which means Amos, that's his name, the cantillation mark there looks like a schwa, but one that's written above the word. When you go back to BHQ and you look in the disjunctive accents uh, column, you will see that this accent or this cantillation mark is just down a few there, and it is the zakef katan. Zakef Katan. So this is a disjunctive accent which, for our sake, um, serves to close off a group of words. And so it's very common in uh, the Hebrew Bible when we have a construct phrase, divrei amos, the words of Amos, let's say, that you will find a conjunctive accent on the first word and a disjunctive accent on the second. All right, so let's go on. So the words of Amos, and then it continues, asher haya. Asher is the relative pronoun. Let's highlight that here. Asher is the relative pronoun, which in this case must be translated, uh, uh, translated as 
who rather than which because it refers back to Amos. The words of Amos, who, and then this is followed by haya, haya, which is the third person basic stem or call stem suffix conjugation, the masculine singular, meaning he was. So a hyper-literal translation or more of an interlinear type of approach would be the words of Amos, who he was, but we would just translate it as who was. The words of Amos, who was. And I want to point out a couple of things about Asher Haya, Asher Haya. So the first is that there is a quasi accent mark uh, connecting Asher and Haya. And you'll notice that this is Makaif, which in BHQ is considered as one of the additional signs. It's technically not um, a, a conjunctive or disjunctive accent, but it does serve to link two words together. So we see here that we have makaif and that asher does not have an accent of its own. It is tying asher to the word that follows, which is haya. Now the accent, the accent for haya, we can see from BHQ is the mercha. The mercha accent is a conjunctive accent. So asher haya is conjunctive, which means these words are tied to something. And so we look at what follows, and the next word is van nokdim, van nokdim, which means among the, we might say sheep breeders, not so much shepherds, among the sheep breeders. Now this is a masculine plural participle of the root nun, Kuf Dalit, with the prepositional prefix ba and the definite article. Remember the he elides or drops out. The he of the definite article elides when it's prefixed by a ba. So van nokdim. And now the accent for van nokdim, as we will see in BHQ, is the tifcha accent. Tifcha accent, which if we scroll up, we see that that is a disjunctive accent. So that means then that asher haya van nokdim need to be grouped together. Who was among the sheep breeders? We see that the two disjunctive accent marks that we've encountered so far, the first one is on amos, the second one is on van nokdim, serve almost as literary parentheses to hold phrases together. Syntactically speaking, divrei amos, the phrase that ends with the, the first disjunctive accent, belongs together. The words and affairs of Amos, syntactically they belong together. And asher haya van nokdim, this also belongs together. It's a relative clause. And so what we're seeing so far is that the disjunctive accents can help us uh, determine the grammar and the syntax of the text. And therefore, these are tools in biblical interpretation as we interpret the text that we're reading. Now, the next word is mitakoa. Mitakoa. Tekoa is a place name, uh, the place from which Amos comes, which has traditionally been linked to the Tekoa of the south. But there's also a Tekoa in the north, and most scholars don't realize that this is probably the Tekoa from which Amos actually comes. Uh, Gary Rensberg of Rutgers University has written on this, and I will uh, include a link to his article uh, later on. Now, Tekoa is prefixed with the prepositional prefix mem, which means from. Remember that uh, the preposition is really min with a nun, mem nun, but the nun likes to assimilate, and so that's what's happened here. The reason for the dagesh or the dot in the tav is it is the nun assimilating. So mit tekoa means from tekoa. Now the accent underneath tekoa here is a disjunctive accent, and we see that it is an atnach accent, atnach. The Atnach accent serves oftentimes to divide a verse into two equal parts. Not necessarily equal in length, 
but two separate parts of the verse. It's a major division. In fact, it is the major division in, a, in most biblical verses. Now, you may have noticed before that the Tifcha accent is explained in BHQ as coming before Atnach or Siluk. And so it's no surprise then that when we go back to Amos 1, Van Nokadim has a Tifcha and Mittekoa has an Atnach. And so far, the first major division of this verse, Divrei Amos Asher Haya Van Nokadim Mittekoa, the words and affairs of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders from Tekoa. Before we go, I want to take a look at these phrases in the Aleppo Codex, which is a 10th century manuscript and is the finest manuscript or codex of the Masoretic text type. So here is the text as it appears in the manuscript. Let me scroll over. And we see here on the top line that it reads exactly what we find, divrei amos, it's punctuated exactly the same way, divrei amos, asher haya. Notice how hard it is to tell uh, the difference between the he and the chet, but this is indeed a he. Uh, notice how big the yud is here in this case. Asher haya van nokedim mitakoa. Right? And I want to point out that over the bait at the beginning of line two is a mark that we don't see in printed editions of the Hebrew Bible. This is the Rafe mark, the Rafe mark, which is a mark that indicates that the Beged Kefet letters are to be pronounced with their softer or their spirantized pronunciation. Now, in addition to that, over the Kuf in Nokdim, Van Nokdim, we see a circillus or a circle. There are actually two circilli in this line. It may appear to you initially that there are three, but the one, uh, but the third mark, which is above the resh in Asher, I'll zoom in on that, is actually a conjunctive accent that looks very similar to the circillus. And so we have two circilli, one over the kuf in Vanokadim and one over the tav in Mitakoa. These correspond to the Masoretic notations, what we call the Masora Parva notes in the margin. And we can see that there are two lamids there. The lamid to the right belongs to the circillus to the right, and the lamid to the left belongs to the circillus to the left. So Vanokadim receives the mark lamid, which indicates that there is only one occurrence of this uh, phrase in the, er, of this form in the Bible, and it is this one, van nokdim. And we can confirm that by going back to our Bible software. And if we do a search for van nokdim, and we look for the inflected form, we see that the only one to show up is Amos 1.1. Okay, so the Masoretes are telling us in the Aleppo Codex here, in the Masora Parva, that this form occurs only one time. Okay, the second form, Mitakoa, also occurs only once. And so let's go check that against our Bible software. Let's check this against our Bible software, Mitakoa. We're going to search for the inflected form here. And indeed, it only occurs in the book of Amos. Now, as we go through our series of analyzing the Hebrew text of Amos, we're going to be looking at the Aleppo Codex to see what's actually there in the manuscript and compare it with the Biblia Hebraica Quinta and Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia texts. And we'll also look at the Dead Sea Scrolls as well. Now, when we go over to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we see that there is no material actually attested from Amos 1.1 in any of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So we're not going to be able to compare the Masoretic text with the Dead Sea Scrolls until we get to Amos 1.2. So we're going to table that discussion for later. Thanks for joining me today for this lesson on the Hebrew text of Amos. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be notified when videos like this appear in the future. Take care, everybody.